Well, hello, party people. <laughs> How are you? I am, you know, Iyamla Van Zant coming to you live today as we prepare for our final um, episode of the House of Healing, Dismantling the Myth of the Angry Black Woman. It has been an incredible, incredible journey. Um, these women have done some incredible work. And I hope that you have benefited from it. I hope you have benefited from the door that these women opened by downloading your worksheets and doing your work, doing your journaling, because this is what they have done. And as I shared with you, um, there's so much that you don't see. You know, there's so much that you don't see. That's why I wanted to do this Facebook Live with you. Uh, and that's why I did a deeper dive. Be sure to get to watch a deeper dive where I talk about each and every episode. I give you tools. I give you assignments. A deeper dive on my YouTube channel, the Yamla Van Zandt's YouTube channel, and the worksheets that we've done uh, each and every week so that you can do the work that they did that you didn't see. I also talk about some of the stuff that you didn't see, and I answer your questions. So thank you, uh, Christina. You know I have to get my visual assistance. I don't wear glasses, but I do have visual assistance. <laughs> One for each eye. <laughs> okay, that's what they look like. Uh, Kaya, Kia, Kia Bailey and Lori Roberts. And I've got some questions. Cassie and uh, Demirs Dixon and Victoria McNeil. I hope that you do watch the shows. And there's a wonderful question that I got from Chantel, Chantal Gregory. I think that's how you say it. You know, with a name like Yam, I'm really sensitive to people's names. So please forgive me, Chantal, if I'm not saying your name right. And here's her question. She says, I wonder why there is a myth of angry black women. I know a lot of black women and they're not angry. Isn't the problem with our upbringing, no matter what the color is? It's not a color, it's a race. Let's call it what it is. It's not a color. We don't have colored people anymore. We have race, regardless of the race and the way women ex are uh, expect to be treated by men. Well, there is a myth of an ang the angry black women and that is why we did this show because everyone else seems to be given the right to have an emotional experience but when it comes to black women, it becomes their identity. And what I wanted to do with this show was to work with some women and show them and the world what's under the anger. And that it's not really anger that they're demonstrating. Very often they're demonstrating hurt or pain or, or shame or guilt or fear. And that then becomes inappropriate behavior. And that inappropriate behavior for black women is frequently labeled angry. I rarely hear people say, oh, she's just an angry white woman. But I do hear them say, you know, she's just an angry black woman. And that becomes our title. I don't know where it came from. I don't know why it's there, which is why I wanted to dismantle it. Just like every other human being on the planet, black women have experiences that they're carrying and they express them sometimes in inappropriate ways, and then it becomes their identity. So thank you for that question, Chantal. And I don't know why the myth exists either, and I hope that after this, people will stop um, identifying black women as angry just because of their behavior, because there's always something going on. Then we go right to this question from Phyllis Buckler, who says, we have a right to be angry. Yeah. Everybody has a right to experience anger. We don't own it as black women. She says, the problem is getting stuck there. Absolutely right, which is the work that I did with the women on the show to show them that they weren't even really feeling anger most of the time. Most of the time they were feeling hurt or the anticipation of hurt, just anticipating that somebody was going to hurt them. Okay, she says... Um, we black women have not only been wronged, listen, everybody's been wrong. I work with all kinds of people, black people, white people, red people, yellow people. And trust me, we don't have any claim to being having wrong done to us. We really don't. I think that what has happened for many women of color, I say women of color because it exists in the Latin community also, that as women of color, so many of us had been silenced. We were silent. And now in the 21st century, when we're owning our companies and when we're, we're degreed and when we're earning the bread, that we're starting to speak up. 
My point is there's a way to speak up appropriately and there's a way to speak up inappropriately. There's a way to behave appropriately when you're having an emotional experience and there's a way to behave inappropriately. Everybody else gets to do it. For some reason, we don't. We black women have not only been wrong, let down, disappointed by our fathers, brothers, husbands, boyfriends. Everybody has. You need to spend some time with my Cuban relatives, okay? They got stories that'll blow your brains out. <laughs> And still we rise. Yes, we rise. When you are constantly vigilant to the negative behavior, that is the point I want to make. And this is what happens for everyone and specifically or particularly about black women. When we've had negative experiences, we hold on to the memory and anticipate it. And just as Phyllis said, we're vigilant about bad behavior. Unfortunately, some of the behavior that we see and labeled as bad, it really isn't meant to be bad. People do what they do based on who they are and the information that they have at the time. But when we are anticipating and expecting bad behavior, we call it Everything that looks like, sounds like, feels like what we've already been through, we label it as bad and then we go after the person. Inappropriate. Inappropriate. You got to ask questions. You got to ask for what you want. You've got to have clear boundaries. All of this stuff you'll find on the worksheet. So uh, when you are constantly vigilant to negative behavior of others, hypersensitivity and hostility results, unnecessary. You don't have to be hypervigilant and you don't have to be hostile. And for whatever reason, we have a tendency to do that. Gerard, thank you. Sarah Bennett, how you doing? Javetta Ivy, Shelly Ann Bachelor, how you doing? Deidre Montgomery, thanks for tuning in. Here's another question. Um, love Fix My Life, wish you could help with our cameras. <laughs> You know what? Let me tell you why I'm doing it in front of the camera. Because for a long time, many years, I know some of y'all think that I just popped up on Fixing My Life. I've been doing this work for 30 years. Flying around the country on planes, in hotels, if I have to eat another Caesar chicken salad or chicken Caesar salad or another one of them darn uh, quesadillas in a hotel room at 10 o'clock at night, I was just going to gouge my eye out with a plastic spoon. So here was my prayer. God, let me do this in a way that reaches the largest number of people with the least amount of effort. And within two months, I got the offer to do Fix My Life. Plus, I do it outside of the camera all the time. I've got an entire school. I've got a program that I will walk you through two years of getting your life, your mind, your heart, your spirit, and all the people in your lives together. Two years program that I've been doing now for 20 years. Okay, I've been, I, I'm not doing this just in front of the camera. I do workshops. I've got one coming up, October 21st to 23rd in Bethesda, Maryland, the Wonder Woman Weekend. Been doing that since 1994, okay? So I don't just do this work in front of the camera. So those of you who want to do the work, who don't want to be in front of a camera, visit iyamla.com or innervisionsworldwide.com. And you can see me somewhere else. I do classes, I do workshops, I do seminars. And to my guests who stand in front of the camera and reveal the most secret, sordid areas of their life, I say thank you because you are a demonstration to the world. You are a demonstration of what is possible. So I need guests. Now, remember, I get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of letters and I only get eight spots a season. 10 this season, so I can't take everybody. Each year I pray, I ask God, what is it that you want me to, sh to show the world? And whatever shows up, that's what I do. Nicole, how you doing? Crystal Brooks, Megan Green, Sequoia Coleman, and Charmaine Singleton Moon. I love that. Hey, Buford, South Carolina. I got folk in Buford, South Carolina. Yep, I do. Sheila Wilson, Pat Bell, Leslie Denise Hernandez. Thank you, Leslie. Here's another question while we're at it. Um, oh, I have it on my phone. See, I'm all set up because this is, thing has been driving me crazy. Aren't you proud of how my technical skills have, have increased over the last few days? See, I got the thing set up. I'm doing really good. Here's a question. How did you select the men on your show? Were they just acting or are they the real deal? Now, I want to address this. Here's what I want to say to all of you that watch the show. Listen, 
you know, do you know the courage it takes for these people to come forward and be on and, and sh tell their story out in public? Yes. And then you get on social media and call them names, call them names and make supposition about who they are and what they're doing. Those men were chosen from a pool of men who responded to our inquiry. Tell us about your relationship with black women. We chose those four because they represented a cross variety. We had Bo, who was very young, 22, 23. We had Michelangelo, who was older, 46. We had uh, Coro, who was celibate. And we had Tyrone, who was right in the middle, right on the edge of 30. And they each had an experience of black women that match the women that we had in the, in the house. Now, there's a rumor floating around out there that they were actors. They were not actors. Also, those men stayed in that house and worked with those women for two days. You didn't see that. They did a lot of work so that when we got to the, the scenes that you saw in last week's show, where the women were telling them their stories, those men sat there, some of them wept, they never opened their mouths because they had never, ever heard the story like that. Just like we as women sometimes think we know what's going on with the men and therefore don't listen. Those men thought they knew what was going on with the women and they didn't listen until last week. And the reason, I mean, until that episode of the show and the reason they were able to sit and listen to the women. You didn't see them. They created a vision board for the women. They asked the women for forgiveness on behalf of their fathers, their brothers. So there's a lot you don't see, which is why I do the deeper dive. Go look at it and you'll get some of those missing parts. So the answer to your question, no, they were not actors. They were chosen from a pool of about 25 men who responded to the inquiry that we put out. And all of you that want to be on the show and you write me and write me and write me, look for the inquiries because that tells you what we're working on for the season. And if your story lines up with the season, submit your, your story. Okay, here's another question. Uh, I've done some grief work similar to the women on the show. What do you suggest we do when we know we have more grief healing work to do but aren't quite sure what to do or how to access that? My short-temperedness, okay, and harsh self-talk assure me I have more work to do. And see, if this is a black woman with short-temperedness or harsh talking to other people, she'll be labeled as angry. Grief work, beloved, takes time. It just takes time. What I encourage you to do is use forgiveness. Forgiveness will help you get up under the grief. Use forgiveness. And if you haven't read it, please get a copy of One Day My Soul Just Opened Up. I'm telling you that not because I wrote it, but because it's really, really good work. And there's work for you to do every day in there for 40 days. So do your forgiveness work. Do your grief work. And you got to start making agreements with yourself about how you're going to be. Uh, in a few weeks, we're going to put back up the Personal Power Program. That will also help you get underneath the grief and lift the grief up. How's everybody? Love, Krishna. Uh, Doretta from D.C. Hey, D.C. Uh, oh, I can't say that. Diondi, Diondi, Diondi. Okay. Danielle King, Beverly Weathers Buckley. And I can't say that name. I would love to. I love you, M S T A S. Miss T oh, Miss Tasty. Miss Tasty Cuisine. <laughs> I love that. That is hysterical. So, yes, the men were not actors. Here's another really good question. One day my soul just opened up, changed my life. Isn't that, that book is really good. Not because I wrote it, but because I lived it. I lived it. Okay, that's my journal. That is the journal I used to help get myself together. So I just turned it into a book. Hi, Sandy here and Henry. Thank you for the support you give women of all ages and races. Listen, the show was about angry black women, but I hope white women watched it. I got a beautiful letter from a white man who said he learned so much because his secretary was black and this helped him understand her. So just because, listen, okay, people, here's your lesson. Just because I'm focusing on an issue about a particular group doesn't mean you can't learn something from the group. Stop thinking that because the show is about black women that you can't get something from it if you're white or Latin or Asian, okay? 
This is what you got to understand. Like draws like. I've been a black woman. I haven't been Asian in this lifetime. <laughs> I've been a Latin woman. I ain't been a white woman in this lifetime. So I can speak to per people based on our shared experience. I'm not trying to exclude anybody. I'm not trying to uh, limit my audience, of course. But I want people to know that these are issues and we can all learn from them because the way this society is set up, it's black over here, white over here, you know, white people issue, black people issue. Uh-uh, we are all as crazy as hell. <laughs> okay, here's another question. I'm a 59-year-old woman who can't seem to maintain a healthy relationship. Everybody in that boat, raise your hand, say, hey, okay. I seem to keep getting the same man over and over. Raise your hand, hey. I'm starting to believe that I'm not meant, I'm meant to be alone for the rest of my life. Stop that, okay? How can I figure out what I'm doing wrong and correct my behavior so that I can improve my relationship skills? Everybody who needs an answer to that question, just clap your hands right now, okay? Okay? This is what I learned about myself. Gwenda Medford, I'm just going to tell you what I learned about myself. I kept drawing the same man over and over and over with a different name, a different size shoe, a different, you know, hairstyle until I got clear, number one, about my unfinished business with my father. I had a lot of unfinished business with my father. I had to get clear about what that was. For me, it was craving my father's acceptance and acknowledgement. And so I kept drawing men into my life who would never acknowledge me <laughs> or accept me. They just wouldn't. Um, I stayed with one of them 40 years, okay? Now we're great friends because I'm clear about who I am. So number one, check to make sure you don't have any unfinished business with your dad. Number two, get clear about what you want in a relationship, what you want. Number three, get clear about what you have to offer to a relationship. If you keep drawing the same man over and over, then you're not clear about what you're bringing and what you're desiring. Get clear about those three things, what your, your unfinished business with your dad, what you're bringing to the relationship, and what you want to the relationship. I, I, I'm going to recommend One Day My Soul Just Opened Up for you too. One Day My Soul Just Opened Up and Forgiveness. I'm going to recommend both of those for you because you're going to keep attracting the part of you that you cannot see. Did you all hear that? You're going to keep attracting the part of you that you cannot see. If you don't understand what I mean, go and watch the R Spot, the episode, I think it's for the relationship you're having with yourself. Because everybody is coming into your life to demonstrate to you the relationship you're having with yourself. So if you're not good enough for these men, if you can't do it right, if you're not enough, if you want too much, if you don't have clear back, whatever it is that's going on inside of you, you're going to draw men and they're going to say the very same thing to you that you can't see in yourself. Okay, that's it. Hello. Hello from Jamaica. Oh my God. Hi, Jamaica. Why are you going down in the yard? What's in the yard, man? Okay. Jamil Barnes, um, Sheila Adams Henderson, Marilyn Cardona Deep. What does a girl do if she lost her dad at a very young age? I always seek what's not good for me. Mm, yes, 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 yes. You know what I had to do? My dad died when I was 30 and, and we cremated him. But when I was about 35 years old, I had a funeral for my father. I created. I got a little box and I put his name on it. And everything that I wanted to say to him, that I had never said, I put it in the box. Everything that I wanted to ask of him that I never asked, I put it in the box. Everything that I felt about him, how angry I was with him, how upset I was with him, when he let me down, betrayed me, died, or he liked my brother better, all of that stuff, I put it in the box. And then, every day, for I don't know how long, I wish I could tell you, let's just say nine days, I prayed over that box, and I prayed to have those things released at their deepest root and cause, deepest root and cause. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed, and then I took that box. Now me, I put it in the river. I wanted it to just float away. You can bury it. You can take the stuff out of it and burn it. Uh, you can do something with it, but you got to transmute the energy. And see, once you start writing, more will come up. 
more will come out. Don't try to do it in your head and write it with a pencil and paper, not on the computer. Why? Because that is a full body experience. You take the thought, you make it physical, you see it, you speak it, and then you've got a full body experience. So you're clearing it on all levels. How'd you like that? <laughs> Clear it on all levels. Okay. Linda Lumet Roth, thank you for loving me. Matthew Sanchez, Columbus, Georgia. Oh my God, I lived in Columbus, Georgia. When my husband was in the army, we lived in Fort Bend in Georgia. And that was in the 70s. And they wanted me to say things to them that I couldn't say. Okay, South Carolina. I'm coming to South Carolina. I'm coming to Milwaukee in December. So get ready. Go to iyama.com and sign up so that you'll get the emails and the newsletter, you'll know where I'm going to be, when I'm going to be there, what I'm doing. Again, Wonder Woman Weekend is October 21st through the 23rd. And don't tell me you don't have the money. Make believe it's a Beyonce concert, okay? And the money you'd spend on the dress and the shoes and the hair and the nails, put that money in an envelope and come on to Maryland so we can get your heart cleaned up. Um, that's Wonder Woman. Uh, also, um, coming Spirit of a Man. You know, the last three episodes of this season, we're working with men. Oh, my God. Listen, you you don't want to miss that, okay? Uh, Spirit of a Man is March 23rd through the 25th, also in Maryland. That information will be out soon. I'm coming to Milwaukee in December, and I don't know where else I'm going. I'm going somewhere. I don't know where it is. Okay, who else is here? Cincinnati, I would come to Cincinnati, but I can't come till May because I don't do cold. I do not do cold, okay? I can't come there. Love you, DC. Rosalind Purvis, love you. Loretta Noble, love you much. Okay, so I don't see any more questions, so I guess y'all don't have nothing else to say to me. Lillian, you need a TV. Yes, you need a TV or the own app. Okay, so did I finish? I didn't finish. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go to yamla.com, sign up so that you'll know where I'm going to be. Also, we have a really new program coming up called Yamla Call Me. <laughs> I love it, you know, because people write me like they know me and they send me their phone number <laughs> and they want me to call them. I can't call everybody every day. If you could see my, if you could see my, um, Desk right now, you would, uh, that's why I'm sitting in this chair and I'm not moving because if y'all could see what I look like, the housekeeper don't get here to Monday. Anyway, call me Yamla or Yamla call me. I don't know which one. It's something. You can sign up at Yamla.com and you will get a, a call from me every day. It's recorded, but I recorded it in my voice. And every day I'm giving you a message. Not every day. I think it's four days a week, something like that. And it's real cheap. It's like... $19 a year, $24 a year, I don't know. But four days a week at a time you decide, because like the East Coast people, the West Coast, the Mountain people, all of that, you'll get a call from me. Oh my God, I've been doing these messages and they are incredible. I'm going to talk to you about everything and I'm going to give you stuff to do. And if you do that and you get that call and you listen to that call every day, I'm telling you stuff is going to shift, okay? Iyamla, figure out what has to be done each day, each week. I didn't get to the top of that. Let's see the death. No, you should see. I'm going to show you one little piece, okay? I'm going to show you one little piece of my desk, all right? This is disgusting, okay? You ready? <laughs> Look at that, okay? This is my coffee cup from this morning. You see what my coffee cup says? Believe. This is uh, the cell phone. Let me show you. Do you see my bookcase? I got lots of books. Look at the papers. You see the papers? Okay. Now, that is disgusting. Okay. My, I, got, I do have my um, Almond Joy bar there in case of, of, anger, of, in case of hunger at some point. Okay. So, uh, yamla.com, you can sign up for Call Me Yamla or Yamla Call Me. I don't know which way it is. Uh, you can also... Sign up for Wonder Woman Weekend, InnovisionsWorldwide.com under Institute. You can learn about my two-year program, the two-year personal development program. Listen, I've had people come from Israel, Jamaica, London, uh, the Bahamas, California, Seattle, Portland. People come to this program once a month for two years. 
All right? So don't be writing me telling me you need me. There's a way you can get to me. And you know what? When they sign up, a lot of them don't know where the money's coming from. But when you make up your mind that you're going to do it, if the money shows up. Uh, I told you about Wonder Woman weekend. When are you coming back to Detroit? In May, when it's warm. <laughs> My best friend lives in Detroit. As she know, from October to May, she don't see me. I just left Alabama. I was in Alabama last weekend. Sorry you missed it. Sign up. Get the newsletter. Get the notices of where I'm going to be. Here's your assignments. Go watch a deeper dive, the relationship you're having with yourself. I'm mean, Not a deeper dive, our spot. The relationship you're having. Go, watch all of them. The one that's up this week is off the chain. No, this week is a letter. Last week, the topic was, whose responsibility is it if your heart gets broken? Okay, go watch that one. Also, download your worksheet for this week's show. This is the fourth episode of the House of Healing for Women. And the worksheet is divine, okay? Uh, you can also, if you have questions about the R spot or the deeper dive or the House of Healing, send them to me at yanlas, I-Y-A-N-L-S, yanlas, dot fixins at gmail.com. I can answer them there or info at yanla.com. I didn't meet my father till I was 27 years old, and now I'm 40. I was raised by my mother when I found out about the fire, but I never had Seymour. Oh, I can't. It's moving too quickly. No. Linda Lamette Roth has never missed an episode of Yala Fix My Life. Good for you. Good for you. Okay, let me ask you a question. When you come into New Jersey, when you come to Ohio, when you come, when are you coming to Maryland? <laughs> I'm in Maryland. When are you coming? You coming from Wonder Woman? You coming to the Institute? When are you coming? And this month, we are, we're promoting, not promoting, offering, encouraging, I don't know what the word is, that everybody clean up their energy by ordering purification. You know I have a line of body products. Did you know I have a line of body products? I sure do. Hand make them myself. Masterpiece body wash. Have a relationship with yourself first. This is Veronica. And all other things will fall in, uh, making yourself available. Okay, my dream is to be your understudy. No, not my understudy. My student. Come on, study with me. I'm ready, boo. Missy Murphy. Yes. And Shandoria, loving me Gandhi. Love it. Okay. Latoya Viano Clausen, I'm in Maryland. There's no reason for you not to come to Wonder Woman. There's no reason for you not to be a student. Okay. Let me tell you something that I learned and then I'm going to go because I've been talking to you all for 26 minutes without stopping because you can't talk back to me. Here's what I learned last week. When you have a behavior that is uncomfortable or when there's anything in your life that you want to change, and you keep trying to change it and it doesn't change. Part of the reason that you can't change it is because there's an emotion underneath the, the behavior that's holding the behavior in place. So in order to make the change, you've got to neutralize the emotions that are underneath it. Hear me? You've got to neutralize the emotions that are under whatever the behavior is, the, the, the drinking, the smoking, the, whatever it is. You've got to neutralize that, that emotion that's holding the behavior in place. That's why you've got to do your work. Do your work, beloved. Down your load your worksheets. I mean, of course, I'm going to tell you to come to my work because I know my work, but there's incredible work out there. And just, here's, here's something you can do. Just for the next seven days, until I get back to you next Friday, make a commitment not to say anything negative to or about anyone. How about that? How about you don't talk about nobody? How about you don't cuss nobody? How about you don't raise your voice at nobody? How about you don't voice your judgments about anybody? Anytime it comes up, just... Okay? How about that? Let's just start there. Not about a presidential candidate, not about your supervisor, your coworker. How about you just spend this week not uttering a negative, judgmental, unkind, unloving word to everybody, anybody. And anytime you do, because you're going to slip, that's okay. Know what you do? Put a quarter in a jar, just 25 cents. Put it in a jar. And at the end of the week, send that money to St. Jude's Hospital for can children's cancer research. All right. I don't care if it's two dollars. They'll take it. 
just go get a little money order and send that money or send a check, all right? No negative speaking. That's your assignment, okay? Has anybody told you they love you today? No? Oh, my God. All those people and nobody loves you. I love you. I love you today. And there's absolutely nothing you can do about it, okay? It's been 29 minutes of me running my mouth. Now, you've got work to do. Go do it.